Hello. Yes, sir. We can hear you. Oh, okay. Sorry about that. That there was a power failure. Okay. Just a minute. Uh, can you see the Highland Complex light? Yes, sir. We can see. Okay, okay. So anyway, uh, so we stopped uh, somewhere here. Interrupted. Uh, the sedimentary, meta sedimentary, and meta igneous rocks are there. Uh, is it? So, meta sedimentary rocks are there. So meta sedimentary means. Uh, sediments which were taken into deep interior then metamorphosed. Igneous means originally igneous rocks, uh, meta igneous means originally igneous rocks, they are taken uh, into the deep interior and then metamorphosed, okay. So <clears throat> here you, you see in the highland complex as I mentioned, uh, charnokites and uh, condylites are the main types of rocks. In addition, we have quartzites, uh, that is what you call tiruana, uh, calc silicates, that means uh, uh, it's not marble, uh, but uh, it is mix, mixed variety of calcite and some other quartz uh, bearing assemblages, or quartz bearing minerals, right? These are called calc silicate rocks. Uh, and uh, pelitic gneisses, pelitic means uh, sedimentary, meta sedimentary rock like uh, the same type uh, like we had uh, condylite like. Uh, condylite is a special rock variety which contains silimonite, but other rocks which do not have silimonite, we can call pelitic gneisses, pelitic rocks. Nice means uh, you have some layering features. So you can see here layering features uh, because you see uh, some uh, characteristic linear arrangement of minerals, see here. So these are like linear type, right? Layering means these ones. So otherwise, uh, you can see the layering uh, likewise here. See, tiny layering, some, uh, some orientation of uh, minerals. And also you can see very thick layers, some, uh, some centimeter to uh, uh, meter scale layering is also there, right? In rock quarries, you may have seen black color and wh white color alternative bandings are there, right? So those all uh, rock types we can call as gneisses, G-N-E-I-S-S-E-S, -S -S -E -S, gneisses, okay? And uh, some granites, if uh, there has been some granites originally, once they get metamorphosed, uh, they will also change into uh, some uh, other form, uh, different forms like uh, the mineralogical changes are also happening. Uh, so those uh, we call uh, granitoids, metagranitoids, right? Granitic gneisses or metagranitoids, both are almost the same. Very slight difference is there, which is uh, not very important uh, at this, uh, at this uh, class. Uh, so anyway, uh, these are the main types of rocks uh, we have in the highland complex. Okay, so uh, we mentioned that uh, the highland complex is composed of granulite phases. So what is this granulite phases? Granulite phases is, uh, so you see here uh, this diagram, please uh, pay attention to this diagram. So here you, you can see, uh, I, I'm not going to detail this very much, but uh, you just see uh, the two axes. Uh, one axis is temperature this way. So it is increasing this way and the other axis is pressure, which is increasing this way, okay? So uh, here uh, we have uh, some uh, classes, uh, some categories. You see in this region, uh, high temperature region, high temperature site, and also towards moderate to high pressure sites, right? So if a rock has been metamorphosed under these uh, uh, conditions, like uh, higher temperatures, normally greater than 700 degrees Celsius, right? and also pressures above four kilobars, pressures above four kilobars, then we term those uh, metamorphic rocks as granulite phases metamorphic rocks. So we term them as the highest grade uh, as well, uh, because in metamorphism, uh, highest grade means highest temperature rocks, right? So likewise, there are several categories. Uh, so granulite is one category. The other one is amphibolite. Amphibolite phases is the other one. So there is a temperature is little low, uh, and pressure is also uh, moderate. It can be equivalent to the granulite phases as well, uh, but the temperature is low. So there, 
you have this uh, amphibolite phases. And then another uh, phases is there that is called green schist phases, which is more and more low temperature conditions. And also the pressure conditions are also uh, comparatively less. Okay. So the minerals appearing in these different uh, categories are different. For example, in green schist phases, we have low grade mica type minerals. For example, muscoite. Uh, muscoite, phlogopite like there are several mica types called muscoite and phlogopite those are available uh, characteristically in this green schist phases when it becomes more uh, more and more little higher temperature what happens is uh, the rock converts into uh, different minerals uh, for example amphibole or hornblende so you may have seen uh, heard of uh, mineral amphibole or hornblende hornblende is one type of amphibole Amphibole is a family name. That mineral comes there. And also biotite comes there. Right? So muscoite uh, disappears when it comes to amphibolite phases because when the temperature increases, muscoite uh, breaks down. It dehydrates and it uh, breaks down forming some other minerals. Right? So that's why, for example, garnet can be produced as a result of muscoite breakdown. Garnet may not be present at very low degrade conditions here, but when it comes to little higher temperature conditions, then garnet appears, orthopyroxene appears, all these garnet orthopyroxene like minerals are anhydrous minerals because they do not contain any water in their structure. Water means uh, hydroxyl group, OH group, or uh, H2O uh, as it is, right? Uh, because the when the temperature conditions increase, all this water get evaporated, right? They get dehydrated and removed from the structure. So a structure, structural change of the mineral means the mineral converts into a new mineral, right? Already existing mineral becomes to a converted into a new mineral, okay? So <clears throat> when it comes to granulite phases, some of the biotites are also disappearing, but some biotites can survive up to 800 or 900 degrees. But beyond that anyway, normally biotite disappears and uh, ultra high temperature minerals like uh, sapphirine that you saw before here yeah, this bluish mineral here so these can be uh, found uh, in uh, excess of 900 degrees celsius right so anyway uh, the highest grade minerals that means high temperature mineral varieties are available uh, in these rocks so orthopyroxene is also another high uh, high temperature mineral that's why uh, you see uh, uh, in the highland complex rocks, there are many uh, orthopyroxenes, right? Th like this, these are orthopyroxenes. So that indicates these rocks have subjected to temperature conditions in excess of 700 degrees, right? Above 700. So that's why we call them, we term them granulite phases, okay? These are uh, termed as granulite phases. Right, so I think, uh, much details, uh, detailed descriptions are not necessary, but just keep in mind that the metamorphic grades can be uh, can be categorized based on the pressure and temperature conditions. Okay, so the peak metamorphic conditions in the highland complex, peak metamorphic means the maximum pressure temperature conditions uh, those rocks have undergone uh, is about 4.5 to 6 kilobars, 4.5 to 6 kilobars, that means somewhere here in this region and what is the temperature 700 to 750 in one part uh, in other parts that means southwest part of the highland complex that means somewhere here right this part has been subjected to uh, pressures 4.5 to 6 kilobar and temperatures 700 to 750 kilo uh, degree celsius but in the east and southeast east eastern part this part and southeast southeastern part that means uh, somewhere in this region, right? Uh, the temperatures is about like uh, 800 to 900 degrees Celsius and pressures is around eight to nine kilobars. So that means uh, four to six kilobars means somewhere here. Temperature is seven to seven, 700 to 750. That means the southwestern part of the highland complex is characterized somewhere here in the granulite phases. The other part of the highland, parts of the highland complex is eight to nine. Uh, pressures more higher uh, pressure conditions uh, and temperatures are also high 800 to 900 that means 800 900 is somewhere here so this part so you can see the highland complex is variable in metamorphic grade 
uh, from here to here like right so entirely granulite phase is uh, region is represented by the highland complex uh, in uh, our uh, different regions of uh, the country right so different part of the highland complex we can identify different uh, pressure temperature conditions but still within the granulite phases uh, boundaries okay so therefore the entire highland complex can be considered as a granulite phases uh, crustal component so you see the highland complex rocks uh, and uh, uh, if we consider about the ages ages of these rocks right the ages of these highland complex rocks we call uh, the geochronological uh, data geochronology means uh, ages of these rocks so mainly the highland complex uh, rocks we can uh, identify uh, to have been formed in different time periods in the history in the uh, earth's history okay so uh, this is the geological time scale one part of the geological time scale where the pre precambrian era is considered here there uh, the precambrian era is uh, divided into two uh, parts archean and protozoic archean is the origin of the earth's time that means about 4.5 billion years ago right 4000 million years ago or before that okay Archean. So it comes up to 2500 million years time. So that is the Archean time. And then it comes the Proterozoic time after 2500 to uh, 500 million years time, right? So we'll see how the highland complex rocks fit into this, uh, the ge uh, this geological time scale. So there are uh, some ages determined by isotopic methods, uh, geochemical methods. Uh, we call them neodymium isotope methods, neodymium model ages, right? Uh, they have uh, constrained like uh, uh, 3,000 to 2,000 mi uh, million uh, years, some of the highland complex rocks, right? So they are uh, not at once all these rocks are formed, at different stages, at different time intervals they have formed. So one, one set of rocks is, uh, is all as like uh, 2,000 to uh, 3,000 million years. Uh, then uh, again, these ages have been uh, confirmed by zircon uh, geochronology as well, zircon ages, because this is uh, one isotopic system and this is another isotopic system, uranium lead, right? So these ages have been confirmed. These are recent ages, these are old ages, but still they are consistent. You can see the references there. Uh, so anyway, uh, they are consistent. And uh, there is another uh, group of rocks which have been uh, recorded some ages of 2000 million years uh, where uh, these uh, original rocks have deposited in unknown basin right that means meta sedimentary rocks right so these are mainly igneous rocks okay these are mainly igneous rocks uh, taken from uh, crystallization of uh, some zircons uh, in magma right so these are metamorphic uh, sorry the sedimentary rocks which are formed uh, deposited uh, in a basin. So I, I mentioned that uh, to deposit sediments, there should be some basin, right? Originally, this basin uh, collects sediments and compact and found, find and uh, form as uh, sedimentary rocks. Then the tectonic forces uh, brings these materials into deep interior, uh, either by collision or subduction, and then convert into metamorphic rocks. So deposition has taken place at this age, about 2000 million years time. And then uh, we have identified another uh, suit of, uh, another set of rocks uh, where uh, it is uh, primarily of uh, magma generated, uh, intrusion of granitoid uh, magma. Uh, that means uh, granite uh, like uh, magma uh, intruded into already deposited rocks because these are now already deposited. Right? These rocks are already formed about 2000 uh, to 3000 million years ago. Later on, into this uh, deposited rocks, new magma have intruded. That is about 1600, uh, that is about 1800 million years ago. Okay, uh, intrusion uh, has taken place. So it is uh, now we have three events, two events mainly. Uh, yeah, three events actually. So these are igneous uh, generation, first igneous generation, and then uh, sedimentary de uh, derivation second uh, step 
and the third step is uh, igneous again igneous uh, intrusion into the already deposited sediments and then another uh, event has been identified that is intrusion of again granites later granites uh, at about 750 million years or 706 uh, sorry 670 uh, million years time actually this is related with the gondwana collision so during the gondwana collision uh, this magma has intruded into the uh, already uh, existing rocks and they have uh, uh, they have uh, formed another uh, set of uh, rocks in between so all these rocks collect uh, together uh, gets uh, deformed during the gondwana collision during the uh, gondwana amalg amalgamation okay right so so basically these are uh, the uh, the intrusions which and uh, depositions taken place uh, during the highland complex and finally what happened was about 550 million years time all these rock sets uh, were metamorphosed together right metamorphosed together as a result of what gondwana collision final gondwana collision right so it's almost at the same time these are uh, final uh, set of igneous rocks have intruded so since then there has been no igneous intrusion into our uh, terrains uh, so normally we consider a very a very tiny amount of uh, granites that we have in some part of the country like uh, arangala or uh, in some other uh, regions uh, okay so i, I mentioned uh, somewhere uh, somewhere uh, in the country uh, you so I yeah yeah see this uh, red spot here this is an igneous intrusion right here also you can see the igneous intrusion red spot and some igneous intrusions uh, should be located somewhere here also uh, I'm not sure it is uh, given clearly uh, all, all these igneous intrusions are slightly late than the uh, metamorphic time. So that means, uh, since we can still identify them as igneous means they are not undergone metamorphism, right? So that means uh, after 550 only they have intruded, right? Up to that uh, 550, all the intruded rocks and uh, the deposited ones were totally metamorphosed, right? But anything after this uh, 550, should be non-metamorphic because the metamorphism has already finished by 550. So after that, whatever intruded should be there without being metamorphosed, right? So such uh, very rare uh, occurrences that I showed you are remaining in, in the country as uh, slightly uh, post-metamorphic. That means uh, slightly after the metamorphism, uh, but later, uh, later than later to that event, there has been nothing. Uh, reported uh, as as uh, igneous intrusions in the country but later on what happened was uh, some sedimentary deposition has taken place in the jaffna uh, and uh, putlam region that's why you see them uh, still uh, covering the entire metamorphic uh, basement right so those sediments are found they are now uh, because they have deposited very late very late about 50 million years ago Okay. So until uh, 50 million years time, except for one or two igneous intrusions, after this 550 metamorphic event, there has been nothing happened uh, for the Sri Lanka, uh, for this highland complex basement, highland, not only highland complex, to the entire uh, Sri Lankan basement. Okay. So this is the history of uh, uh, the rock uh, depositions uh, in the uh, depositions and formations in the country. Uh, particularly, this is the highland complex uh, situation. So when it comes to the uh, Vanni complex, uh, it will be slightly different, but uh, you have to keep in mind that Highland complex has uh, this type of uh, history, the type of rocks and uh, the ages are uh, like this. So is there any question uh, for this, uh, until this uh, content? Do you have anything to get clarified? <clears throat> no questions okay if if no questions are there then so, uh, 
Excuse yeah. me, sir. Yes. I have a small question, like not related to this part, but to the previous one. In the previous one, you mentioned about mascaravite, right? Mascaravite. No, I did not. Uh, in that, uh, in the previous uh, not. slide. Here? It comes to the screen color area. Uh, the not this one, the other one, like next to this. This one. No, uh, uh like uh, no. I mean, uh, you have to go to the other side. Other side. Like the next one, next next side. The but, previous one. I mean, no. to the front. No, forward. Forward. Here. Yeah, to the front. To the front. Okay. Yeah, forward. Okay. For this one, this one. Okay. Where you about the temperature and the pressure? Uh... The chart where you have the temperature and the pressure. Uh, 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 you 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 refer to a mineral? Which mineral you refer to? Mascaravite. Mascaravite. No, I did not mention. No, I no, it, uh, sir, you were talking about the garnet is becoming like with the temperature. Mascaravite. Are you also heard mascaravite? Is it's it, not mask. Ah, uh, maybe uh, flogopite and uh, mascaravite. I did not use the, that mineral name. Ah. Uh, you said something like it breaks into like eventually it breaks into garnet. Yeah. Yes. Something like that. Muscovite, muscovite, muscovite. muscovite. Oh, yeah. Oh. yeah, that is muscovite. It's a, uh, it's a one of the uh, micas. Ah, okay, oh. sir. I actually I thought like it's something related to this. There is a rare stone called uh, mascaravite. Mascaravite, mascaravite. Uh, no, not that one. This is a this is a hydrous mineral. Um, uh, uh, what is a, a family in the mica? Okay. Uh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's a low grade mineral. Which uh, breaks down to form garnet. It can form garnet. Oh, okay. You mean, uh, sir? You mean the, the same question? What uh, this, uh, no. this is asking? Like uh, uh, this garnet is becoming with the uh, high grade, and the muscovite is uh, with low the low. Grade. Yeah, yeah. Right? That's low correct. grade. That's correct because muscovite is not stable at high temperature conditions. So any mineral, even if, the uh, muscovite with the further heat, uh, it turn, turn into the uh, garnet, right? That's right. Very good. Yes, yeah, that is the idea. Not only garnet, sometimes it can form into uh, orthopyroxenes as well. Pyroxenes as well. It depends on uh, it depends on the condition, temperature, pressure conditions. There are some uh, reactions uh, which uh, are related with uh, uh, pressure and temperature. So at some pressure and some temperature, muscovite can directly turn into pyroxene, uh, whereas uh, at some, some other conditions, it can turn into garnet. Provided that uh, you have a specific bulk chemistry as well, uh, because you know it's it's not just the muscovite turn into garnet; it reacts with uh, K feldspar also. Quartz is also, uh, sorry, not k but quartz should also be present. So, muscovite plus quartz uh, turn into garnet plus water. And k feldspar is produced as a by byproduct because muscovite contains iron, magnesium, aluminium, potassium. So, on the react uh, reaction right hand side, on the product side, all these uh, elements should be incorporated. So, garnet can take all iron, magnesium, uh, aluminium, right? But for potassium, it has to uh, come into a, a different mineral because garnet cannot host potassium. It cannot take potassium because of uh, differences in ionic uh, radius and all the, those uh, things. Therefore, feldspar is produced instead of uh, instead of other potassium bearing thing. So quartz is there as a re reactant. So that silica is there from quartz. And that is combined with potassium from muscovite uh, forms a new mineral as K feldspar. And the water which was available, or the hydroxyl group, OH group, which was available in the muscovite, turns into water as a product. 
okay okay so that's clear yeah so that means uh, so generally you won't be able to get muscovite uh, deposits right so that has been already yeah. converted it, yes yes that that is mostly uh, uh, decomposed uh, to some other minerals but rarely you might get some inclusions in uh, minerals muscovite because in once you have uh, them in, in as inclusions it is like shielded it is like covered so it will not uh, expose into the higher temperature conditions because it is covered in a uh, other mineral so such grains can be can survive but other grains will all uh, consumed uh, as a inclusion can we can we identify it like yes yeah by it? the microscope you can identify either microscope or if it is very tiny then even uh, scm can help oh, okay yeah so you can see some inclusions in this see here some biotite inclusions uh, in the garnet can you see them so likewise some yeah. muscovite can also be there muscovite trapped, can be also there yeah trapped in uh, garnet or some other mineral so does it have any particular shape or like uh, no it it's almost like bi biotite like this uh, biotite appearance uh, they okay. are like uh, yeah similar to biotite musk uh, because it is also a mica ah okay that's how you identify it no yeah the but the color is uh, different muscovite is colorless entirely colorless it looks like quartz colorless like this uh, but uh, you know so like you have those those platy like effect will be there right. no? yeah platy like uh, appearance yes yeah okay okay thank you sir right no problem okay then shall we go to the vani complex that is the second uh, biggest uh, other complex and there are the metamorphic condition is upper amphibolite to granulite phases that means uh, not only uh, of course it is also representing granulite phases uh, but it has some rocks which are representing the upper part of this amphibolite phases conditions as well upper amphibolite phases means like uh, above 600 degrees celsius right so it is uh, varying in composition from upper amphibolite to granulite phases conditions the uh, the vanni complex rocks uh, so mainly uh, vanni complex uh, is uh, composed of meta igneous rocks so in the highland complex we had both meta igneous and meta sedimentary but in the vanni complex uh, we have less very limited amount of uh, sed sedimentary meta sedimentary rocks mainly all the rocks are Uh, like uh, meta igneous like granitic or granodioritic these are slightly different compositions uh, in granitic rocks uh, the granodioritic means a little less quartz than granitic rocks okay and chanokite also they are in the vanni complex but uh, condalite like uh, rocks will uh, are not found in uh, uh, vanni complex for example sillimanite bearing uh, uh, rocks are not found in vanni complex and uh, very rarely if uh, you had them very rarely you have uh, you can find them but still restricted to this uh, highland complex boundary all this uh, this uh, sillimanite now although mentioned here uh, it is restricted to the boundary with the highland complex if maybe uh, some remnants from the highland complex also uh, but uh, it might not entirely from the vanni complex itself right so really you can find this meta sedimentary rocks there but majority of the rocks in the vanni complex are uh, meta igneous and uh, as i mentioned before the incipient chanokitization or the arrested chanokitization that means uh, the you, you saw some patches of chanokites right here uh, in kurnagal region that is vanni complex okay uh, this type of uh, rocks are very very common uh, so it's uh, that's why we 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 consider it as the uh, granulite phases uh, some conditions because all the pyroxene belongs to granulite phases so these uh, incipient chanokites or arrested chanokites are part of those granulite phases rocks so that's why we consider uh, the vanni complex has upper amphibolite to granulite phases conditions not only amphibolite phases but also some granulite phases conditions are also there so especially in coronagal region you can see this uh, incipient chanokitization or arrested chanokitization actually this is uh, why we call them arrested or incipient means uh, the reaction which forms orthopyroxene has stopped in the middle if it continued 
the entire rock will be converted into uh, a charnokite. But you see, uh, you have a host, whitish host, because this is uh, mainly feldspar uh, quartz biotite bearing host rock. Okay, but this part is orthopyroxene bearing. No uh, less amount of uh, these rocks, these these minerals like uh, quartz and feldspar. But if this reaction continued, you will see this entire region becomes dark uh, like this orthopyroxene bearing. But it has stopped in the middle uh, due to uh, uplifting of these rocks, you know, decompression or uplifting. All these reactions are taking place uh, during uh, the rock is coming up to the surface, right? Not only once after metamorphism completes, these rocks uh, should be coming backward to the shallow levels, right? That is happening uh, in response to the isostasy or the equilibrium conditions. So on the top of the rock, on the surface, what is happening is erosion, right? Erosion is removing some parts of the rock. To compensate that erosion effect, uh, the rocks from the interior tries to push upwards. That is what you call the uplifting or uh, the upliftment or uh, the decompression, right? So once uh, these rocks are coming to shallow levels, for example, uh, if, uh, if the rock for example, here, if this region you have the orthopyroxene bearing reaction is taking place, right? You suppose, uh, say, five kilobar is the pressure where the orthopyroxene bearing reaction is taking place. So, why, when the rock is coming upward, slightly it, the pressure is also decreasing, right? So, four or five uh, kilobars is decreasing, and maybe it has now faced uh, come to a region like three kilobars. So, at three kilobar, that orthopyroxene bearing reaction cannot continue because it has not sufficient pressure. So it stops in the middle, it's like frozen. So that's why uh, you see uh, some uh, stopped reaction or frozen reaction regions uh, found in the rock. So no more reaction will continue. So the rock comes up back to the uh, surface or near surface conditions, right? Later on after erosion, uh, all these rocks again exposed the new rocks are exposed once this erosion is taking place so now you have some specific rocks far, far can be observed on the uh, on quarries uh, available on the surface but some million years later all these rocks will be eroded away then new rocks from the interior will be exposed right some 50 million years later you will see some new rocks not this not the rocks that you uh, ex or mine for your house construction these days right so likewise, this uh, cyclic process continues and uh, more deeper rocks will be coming to a shallow level. So this is a continuous process uh, taking place throughout the history, right? That is what you call the rock cycle. Okay, so uh, Highland, uh, sorry, the Vanni complex is mainly composed of uh, meta igneous rocks so that you have to keep in mind. So the pressure and temperature conditions uh, for the Vanni complex is about uh, ranging from 3.5 to 7.5 kilobars and temperatures uh, from 600 to 900, right? Uh, in the Highland complex, it was like 700 to 900, like. but here it's uh, ranging from 600 to 900. Uh, that means uh, it includes the upper amphibolite phases uh, conditions as well. So when it goes to the uh, highland complex zone, right? Highland complex tectonic boundary here, the metamorphic grade increases, right? That's why I told you uh, the silimonite bearing rocks, if found, if uh, some rare silimonite bearing rocks are there, they are concentrated along this boundary. Somehow, this boundary region has suffered higher temperature conditions. So that's why you see uh, more higher uh, metamorphic uh, grades in that uh, boundary region. Okay, uh, in the place where, in the region where you have contact with the highland complex. Right, so the Vanni complex is mainly composed of uh, meta igneous rocks, as I mentioned. So, so you meta granites, granitoid rocks. So these are the granite, granitic uh, appearance rocks. So once metamorphosed, uh, these granites, it becomes meta granite or meta granitoid. So then uh, the orientation of these minerals are also getting aligned to more uh, elongated manner. So this is a pure igneous rock I have shown here uh, because uh, I just wanted to show you the protolith, the parent material. Once it is metamorphosed, it will become more, uh, more elongated like the condolite you saw here, 
right? See some elongated appearance, some flattened appearance because of pressure effect. These minerals get flattened, right? See, even garnet is flattened, right? This is an effect of uh, pressure in the metamorphism, right? So original granite rock, you see these granites, you are taking them into your kitchen as tiles, right? Those are original granites, not the metamorphosed granite. But in our country, uh, the tiles we use for uh, this uh, tiling also you we, we have from metamorphic rocks as well. There you just clearly observe very closely that you can see some elongated appearance, some elongated appearance of uh, these uh, minerals. Uh, in a uh, in some cases you can see very clear layering as well, right? Those are after metamorphism. So. Uh, some uh, some of uh, the Vani complex uh, rocks you can see very clearly this uh, layering uh, after uh, after metamorphism and not only that Vani complex uh, in uh, this Anuradhapura region close to this Anuradhapura area uh, you know the Epavala region Epavala phosphate is there right that is what we call a carbonate carbonateite deposit okay uh, Epavala is a carbonateite deposit so where uh, you see the, uh, the fertilizer is manufactured from this carbonateite deposit. It's a uh, apatite deposit actually. Apatite is a uh, phosphate bearing mineral. Uh, there you see a uh, lot of uh, phosphor, uh, phosphor, uh, phosphorus bearing uh, composition. So it's an apatite bearing uh, region. Uh, not only apatite, but other, uh, other uh, marble calcite is also there along with that. Uh, anyway, that is a uh, used as a mining for fertilizer okay it's appetite huge appetite crystals you can find there even a human size crystals can be found in that deposit it's a uh, it's a it's a slightly late uh, deposit than the metamorphism so that's why uh, that uh, appetite is uh, preserving their original igneous uh, crystallization uh, behavior or habit that's why you see huge uh, crystallized uh, uh, minerals like uh, those crystallizing from pegmatites okay uh, even bigger than pegmatite crystals huge even human size grains are there so that means that apatite deposit is very very slowly cooling cooling uh, magma generated uh, deposit right even in uh, not only in epavala there is another place called kavisigamu kavisigamu is uh, located in uh, near kurunagala Right, somewhere near Kurna Ridigama, uh, near Ridigama region. There are also some carbonate deposits are there, phosphate, appetite bearing deposits are there. So these are slightly uh, later than uh, the metamorphism, uh, therefore, we call them post tectonic. So the granites in Thornigala, Thornigala means uh, somewhere here, right, and uh, towards the Puttalam line, but before this sedimentary layer, uh, you have some uh, granite there. Right, that is what you call the thorny color granite. So that granite uh, is unmetamorphosed. So unmetamorphosed means it's later than metamorphosis. So these are very rare deposits, right? I said uh, after metamorphism, there is nothing uh, much uh, intense uh, magmatic events in the country, except for this particular uh, post-tectonic uh, intrusions, right? Some Galgamo region also, some granites are there. Uh, Thornigal and Galgamo. Thornigal granite is something very, very uh, similar to this one. M very pinkish varieties are there, feldspars. So these are K feldspars, potassium feldspars, microcline feldspars. Okay. Normal granites, you see uh, whitish appearance, right? Pinkish granites and whitish granites are there. So pink granite means K feldspar bearing granites and white granite means plagioclase feldspar bearing granites. The other feldspars, two types of feldspars are there. So you see this white. Uh, this white color feldspar is there, this one. This is a uh, plagioclase feldspar. So in this granite, in this particular image, you have pink feldspar dominant. But some other granites, you have this whitish feldspar dominant uh, granites. So those two types of granites we have. Thornigal is uh, this pink feldspar dominant granite and Galgamo is uh, this whitish feldspar or fel plagioclase feldspar dominant granite is there. Arangala granite is also uh, plagioclase feldspar dominant granite. So these are the characteristic rocks which we can find in the uh, in the Vani complex, uh, which are not available in the Highland complex. Okay, 
high level complex rocks and one complex rocks the difference you can understand i think now so this is uh, one example from apatite crystal uh, in a power so you see very beautiful uh, hexagonal shape is preserved there right Hexa hexagonal shape uh, is there and uh, huge you see the crystal faces you can see the line there right so this is uh, some i think uh, this is uh, nearly 1 feet this uh, this crystal although there is no scale here uh, this is at least 10 cm uh, in length so this is a half of the crystal right so it means uh, it's nearly 20 cm or 2 feet closely to 2 feet uh, oh sorry uh, yeah 1 feet nearly 1 feet uh, in length total right so it's half feet like uh, 10 cm like uh, grain here but uh, the biggest size of crystal uh, apatite crystal found found in nepal is almost like a human size that means 4 5 feet long such crystals are there in the apatite so if you happen to have a chance to visit the uh, place so please uh, get some samples collected from there has anyone gone to uh, this uh, pavel phosphate deposit no uh, actually we have inspected this uh, these grains under the microscope and uh, have done some analysis as well so these are full of inclusions there are so many fluid inclusions in these ones so therefore purity has a problem there as a gemstone variety so but some some grains are there actually some crystals are there free of inclusions so we can take them as uh, semi precious gems gem varieties but uh, we are think uh, we are uh, trying to develop some research uh, research projects uh, so that we can uh, make them clear stones make them uh, very clear uh, to uh, increase their value so value addition uh, research is going on uh, for these apatite crystals to make them uh, to high price right so un under the current uh, or the raw conditions uh, they are full of inclusions or some Uh, clarity is not very good so we are trying to heat treatment uh, doing heat treatments or some other uh, possibilities to check uh, whether enhancing their quality for for a better value as a gem uh, value added gem variety so it's very important that uh, we uh, we do some uh, research uh, on these uh, deposits not only apatite but also some other zircon deposits also they are kavisigamo uh carbonate deposit also you have very big zircons as well not only apatite crystals very big zircons are also there like 2 uh, 3 cm size big size grains so oh. but uh, the problem is they are not transparent those zircons are not transparent so therefore uh, in general in a gemological point of view uh, there is no much uh, market value for that right but uh, if we can cut them and uh, enhance the quality the clarity uh, that would be uh, good i think uh, in the uh, commercial point of view so it's better it's be, uh, better to seek such avenues uh, even under your research projects in the future to find out a, uh, the ways where you can increase the clarity and uh, the quality of uh, these uh, stones uh, like uh, what we do for uh, gouda right gold and topaz heat treatments so try to do uh, such heat treatments for other gem varieties as well not always go after gold or topaz uh, but try for zircon uh, amazonite or some other uh, gem varieties as well i mean semi precious varieties as well so that uh, you can increase their quality uh, for a better market because for moderate level uh customers i think uh, those uh, gem varieties are very important so excuse yeah 